This is James Spencer from Spencer Artist Development, The Actor Studio, Episode 2. How do you pick the best monologues to use in your acting portfolios? Uh, so here's some words of advice. You need to learn the industry. Um, it's amazing to me how many uh, beginner actors um, will come to me for the first time and I just said, okay, what plays have you seen? Uh, who do you know? And they haven't seen one play. You know, they want to be an actor. I'm like, you have to start spending time daily watching quality acting. So here's what should be part of your routine before you even start to uh, look for monologues or pick monologues. Okay. Every day, what I would do is start watching Academy Award winning movies. Very simple to find. All you do is you can go uh, Google Wikipedia, you know, best movies of the year, you know, Academy Awards or best actor, best actress. And, it, you know, the first Academy Award was way back almost 100 years ago, 1929. And you could start there and just see all of the movies that were nominated for Academy Awards, who won, also who were the best actors, best actresses. Um, start getting familiarized with with movies um you know actors actresses directors uh you'll find that different uh directors of movies have different styles you know alfred hitchcock uh tarantino steven spielberg uh george lucas you know and start learning the industry in addition to uh watching excellent uh, movies, again, that are that are award-winning movies, do the same with plays. You need to know your classic playwrights and, you know, uh, what's out there. So a great way to start with that if you're unfamiliar with a lot of plays is, again, go to Wikipedia and look up what is called the Tony Awards, T-O-N-Y. Tony Awards are uh, held in New York annually and they have, you know, uh, winners for, you know, best musical uh, as well as best play. And you can also see who was nominated for, you know, best actor in a play, best actress, and what plays uh, were nominated. That way you start learning your famous playwrights. You can also, through YouTube, watch complete Broadway plays or productions from different colleges and things like that. Get familiarized. You need to know your playwrights. Like, who is Arthur Miller? What did he write? You know, The Crucible, Death of a Salesman, Eugene O'Neill, uh, Noel Coward, Shakespeare. You know, you need to start just exploring and learning. Okay. So make that part of your daily practice. Instead of just watching, you know, uh, you know, mindless reality television, if you're relaxing at home in the evening, put on a play put on a quality movie. Also, if you tend to like one genre, like let's say, you know, you're, you know, you like horror. Okay. Well, that's great. Watch some, but then, you know, watch sci-fi, watch romantic dramas, watch period pieces, watch westerns, you know, break out of your comfort zone. Same with decades. If you just, you know, tend to watch current movies, let's say within the last couple of years, I want you going back and looking at classic movies, you know, movies all the way back in, you know, pre-code movies. That means, you know, uh, before 1932, uh, looking at film noir, which is a specific style of movie making uh that, you know, kind of like thrillers and they're in black and white, you know, learning again, Hitchcock, learning, you know, epic movies that are historical movies from the 50s, like Ben-Hur and Ten Commandments and things. It broaden your horizons. Okay, now let's get into picking the monologues. So when you go to pick the monologues, in the last episode, we talked about the different websites and places to start looking, okay? What you want to do is, of course, play to your strengths and who you are. Your monologues that go into your portfolio are reflecting who you are as an actor, as a person, your personality. So um, remember, the, the, the first rule is play within your correct age. 
okay that's important so again if you uh, especially with kids kids should stay like only two years within the range like if you are an eight-year-old girl you're playing maybe six to ten and that's it do not play teenagers okay um, if you are um, you know a, a, a mid teenager like let's say you're 15 16 do not try to play 35 maybe you can stretch up to you know if you're 15 up to 18 that's about it okay really watch that second of all you know uh, when you're picking monologues you really if you like a monologue on the monologue blogger or one of the websites see how many people are doing them on YouTube do not pick if you can overly done monologues monologue blogger I love but there are a few monologues on that website that everybody tends to do and you're going to get compared that you would rat is rather better to pick something that really reflects you and is super fresh and super interesting also we'll talk in later videos how you can take a monologue and really make it your own with your own twist and make it very unique okay and still you know be not messing with the actual dialogue okay so we'll talk about that but that's important if you have a specific ethnicity um, that you know you might want to play to that not that every monologue has to be specific to your ethnicity but like if you are a Latina you know maybe you know and you you know you're a Latina in the LA community here it makes sense to do something that is a Latina character for at least one of your monologues same if you're you know um, African-American or you know a Asian or or so forth also, I feel if you're over, let's say, age 16 on and you have a specific sexuality, it is uh, completely uh, in vogue right now to play to that. Like like if you're a gay male, uh, maybe do a gay character. Um, if you're transsexual, nothing wrong with, you know, doing a, a transsexual monologue or whatever, okay? That's sort of a trend right now uh, of the sort of openness to sexuality that you should never though do anything lewd that doesn't mean you don't do porn okay you you know you still you're, you're you're showing your acting but you know you can add that little dimension in um and i and uh if you feel comfortable with that and sometimes that could add some dimension um another thing if you wear corrective lenses like i do okay you have to think about in a monologue does that character wear glasses if not, you really need to be considering getting contacts or, you know, working with, if you're not too blind, you know, then working without your glasses. I'm actually blind as a bat. So I, I do, you know, when I, when I do uh, specific monologues, I have, um, you know, contact lenses I put in. But that's important. But then, you know, certain roles, uh, like I do a lot of retro 1950s roles, I have that kind of face or whatever. Uh, and you know Elvis hair or whatever you know if I'm doing that kind of role I might wear my glasses you know so it just really depends but that's something you want to think about um, as well when you're choosing play to your strengths like for example again if you are from a specific US region that has a strong dialect like that you're from the south or you're from Brooklyn or something like that Boston uh, you might do, uh, you might play to that, but remember that a good actor needs to be neutral too. So, like, if you have a heavy accent, you're going to have to learn what I call, a, you know, a basic American accent that is not so overly difficult. Some areas of of uh, the U.S. dialects are are very difficult to understand. So, we will be talking in other episodes about perfect. Uh, you know, diction, clarity, uh, and so forth. For example, again, I live in California, and a lot of Californian beach people along the coast here tend to be very lazy in their talk, and they don't move their mouth much. So I'll give you an example. Dude, I'm from Huntington Beach, and I kind of talk like this, and I barely move my mouth, you know. And that's very difficult to understand in a um, you know in a monologue so we'll be working on that too monologues another thing you should uh, monologues that you pick 
need to be no more really than about a minute okay so uh, what's usually good is 45 seconds to a minute if you're finding a monologue that you love and it's more than that like let's say it's like two minutes or three minutes you're it's perfectly fine to cut but you have to think about continuity you got it does it does that monologue flow does it make an impact does it have a you know an emotional connection okay never pick monologues where uh the the uh character is just telling a story okay so like you never do that you want the character acting or or, or in you know in in the emotion uh, and so forth instead of like this happened to me blah 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 you don't kind of lecture when you act um, that's very very boring you have to think about does this acting monologue does it make an emotional impact uh, that's very very important if you're not feeling it like if you're not connected to your monologue and you're not feeling it the audience isn't either so it's really important you think about like you know, this is something that means something to me, and can I use uh, my life experience or emotions to really bring this character to life and make you know contact with you know my audience and pull them in? Okay, that's your job. You're only getting one minute on a monologue, so if you're not liking your monologue and you're just like eh, going through the motions, you're just wasting your time. Okay, so you know, really take the time. In your monologues to look at the um, synopsis and the backstory sometimes in monologues you don't get much of a backstory it's just like you know this character is getting married go you know you're like well I don't know what why are they getting married you know and you have to sometimes we'll talk about that in other videos like dive deeper into the character and what would you do in that situation you know you gotta think about like who am I how do I tend to react okay so hopefully these tips will help you i will have many more videos okay uh coming up so stay with me if you like my uh videos be sure to uh like my page and so forth and if you are in the u.s and in need of uh, an acting coach um i'm pretty booked right now but i do have a couple of uh online openings for for us residents and i have uh i think two morning spots still available okay thanks so much again james spencer the acting studio